Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo and Thomas Bangalter, more succinctly known as Daft Punk, are arguably two of the most famous and easily recognizable musicians on earth, having won countless major awards, including six Grammys, and even managed a Best Original Score award for the absolutely amazing soundtrack from Tron Legacy. Despite their extreme success, exceptionally few of their millions of fans actually know what the duo look like. You see, the pair have spent the last decade decade or so, carefully constructing their robotic public alter egos, which all begs the question of, well, why? Though today the pair almost never grant interviews and go to rather absurd levels to hide their faces both on stage and in interviews, when they made their first foray into the world of music, they had no such reservations. Prior to Daft Punk, they made up two-thirds of a rock trio called Darlin, which had lackluster success from 1992 to 1993. The band, in which Guy Mann played guitar and Thomas played bass, released a grand total of four songs over their brief six-month-long career, two of which appeared on a vinyl compilation album titled Shimmies in Super 8. The album, of which only about 800 copies were made, is notable for a review it inspired by Dave Jennings of Melody Maker magazine, who referred to the band's sound as Daft Punk. Thrash. Now, a lot of sources do suggest that he actually called them a load of daft punk, but this is actually wrong. The review was read by the duo, and they went on to name their new band after it because they thought it was quite funny. As mentioned, while performing as Darlin, neither Guy Man nor Thomas made any attempt to obscure their faces. It should, however, be noted that they only had two real gigs. They likewise did not try to hide their faces when they initially formed Daft Punk in 1993 following the breakup of Darlin. It was at this point that the bands began adamantly refusing to be photographed or filmed without obscuring their appearance in some way. Initially, the duo used whatever they had on hand at that moment to hide their faces during interviews such as shaving cream, swimming goggles, and on at least one occasion, a pair of black cloth bags. They would also typically wear Halloween masks for shows. In 1999, while the pair were in the middle of recording Discovery, they began to discuss the idea of constructing alternative identities that matched the direction of their music, and they settled on the idea of quite literally becoming humanoid robots. To accomplish this goal, Daft Punk approached two artist friends, Alexander Corte and Martin Figaro, who created the initial concept art for what would become Daft Punk's new robot alter egos. They then took this part to a renowned special effects guru, Tony Gardner of Alterian Inc., who began the long process of turning it into an actual costume. According to Gardner, the design of Thomas's silver helmet was chiefly inspired by the look of Gort from the 1951 film The Day the Earth Stood Still, whereas Guy Mann's helmet was initially supposed to be entirely gold, not dissimilar from, to quote Gardner, a spaceman's helmet, before the decision was made to include the now iconic LED display. The inclusion of so many LED lights in the helmet caused a number of issues during the early phases of construction, forcing Alterian to bring in the guy who designed the Jumbotron. To supply power to the helmets, both of which featured a number of features such as displaying text and a variety of patterns controlled by a console located on each of their arms, Gaiman and Thomas had to wear bulky backpacks containing a power supply and circuitry from which countless wires could clearly be seen entering the back of the helmet. This actually added to the effect, giving the appearance of a slick of robotic hair. Speaking of which, up until literally the last minute, both helmets originally had wigs which fit with the early concept art provided by Alex and Martin. However, just before arriving at the photo shoot to unveil their new robotic personas in 2001, the duo decided to remove the wigs, feeling that it made them look sleeker. Another issue with the earliest models of the helmets was how hot it got inside them, but this was later solved by adding various ventilators. Upon unveiling their new look, Daft Punk were surprisingly coy about exactly why they'd made the decision to suddenly don robot helmets and gloves. When directly asked, Thomas jokingly responded, We did not choose to become robots. There was an accident in our studio. We were working on our sampler, and at exactly 9.09 a.m. on September 9, 1999, it exploded. When we regained consciousness, we discovered that we had become robots. When asked if the duo were going to wear the costumes on stage, Guy Men doubled down, stating, We are robots now. This prompted Thomas to add, presumably with a smirk under his helmet, We don't wear helmets. Everything's real. 
Over the years, as the band has softened somewhat on their stance on interviews, other pieces of information about why they chose to don the suits has come to light. For example, in 2013, during an interview with Rolling Stone, the duo clarified that the robot masks were not originally for marketing purposes or to sell records, but to explore the line between fiction and reality and create fictional personas that exist in real life. Further noting that they thought of the helmets as sci-fi glam in that they represented an obviously exaggerated persona that is distinctly not them. That said, in the same interview, the duo noted that the robot personas had become an unmistakable part of their draw, quipping, We're not performers, we're not models. It would not be enjoyable for humanity to see our features, but the robots are exciting to people. Finally getting to the heart of the original motivation for the masks, they stated, We're trying to separate the private side and the public side. It's just that we're a little bit embarrassed by the whole thing. We don't want to play this star thing. We don't want to get recognized in the streets. On that note, a huge benefit of the robot persona is that despite their superstardom, it's easy for the pair to go about their daily lives without Daft Punk fans constantly hounding them for autographs or things like that. Thomas noted, Reminding me of what I do, it's nice to be able to forget. And for the curious, yes, despite the pair's sincerest efforts to remain masked, there are plenty of photos out there of Daft Punk without their helmets, though none of which we personally have the rights to publish here. So we're going to leave you with some links in the description, and do proceed at your own risk, because they do look a whole lot cooler in their robotic form. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below, and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out some videos linked to on the screen? And as always, thank you for watching.